We are going to install a 3,000 gallon rainwater harvesting system. They gave me free range to just kind of do what I wanted to do. We set up this well pump. This is just drawing water right out of the bottom of the reservoir. They were totally sold on the idea of the bowl. They knew that they would get a waterfall. They knew there'd be a stream, but they had no idea how it was going to come together. Hey guys, it's Brian from Team Aquascape, and our channel is all about transforming outdoor living spaces with water features. Design and installation is who we are, and building backyard dreams is what we do. All right, guys, this is going to be an unbelievable transformation. We've got all kinds of fantastic things happening in this video. First, we've got a challenge in the backyard. The problem we have back here is with a lot of new construction in this um, subdivision, groundwater has no place to go. So this particular customer's backyard floods all the time. Some pumps are all dumped into the back corner, and if they get a big rain, uh, it's just a big, muddy, muddy mess. Now, you can see that they've tried to mitigate some of that by putting in some dry stream beds and and everything's worked for a little bit but then failed over time so what we're gonna do is come in here solve a problem and make it look beautiful we are going to install a 3,000 gallon rainwater harvesting system and it's going to go right underneath that fire pit area what we're going to do is come in here and start taking everything apart we're going to get rid of the fire pit we're going to get rid of all those little tiny stones put all of that stuff off to the side we may or may not use some of this stuff later and now we're going to start laying out that 3,000 gallon system so we lay out our aqua blocks mark it all out this is going to give me a template in which i can dig so we're going to come in here start digging and one of the challenges we're gonna have with this project is the amount of soil that we're gonna generate is gonna be a whole lot more than what we're gonna handle. So we're gonna have to haul some of that stuff out of here. This white pipe you see is actually one of the sump pump lines. So that's coming all the way from the house. And so we're gonna take that sump pump water, which is tied to some downspouts and stuff, and actually end up dumping it into our rainwater harvesting system. Here's all that dirt. We're gonna have a massive pile of dirt. Now, normally that dirt is used to create different waterfalls, um, create our berm, give us kind of a starting point for our waterfall in the stream. But with a 3,000 gallon reservoir, it's way more dirt than we need, so we have to haul it away. We're gonna start the whole thing with the biofalls. We're just kind of tightening up the bulkhead fittings here. But we want to line the biofalls up just like we always have with the views from inside the house. So there's this small little area in between this grove of trees here that lines right up with the deck about 80 feet from the house. We're gonna get that biofall set and take all of that excavated soil and put it up and around the biofall. While I'm digging, guys, of course, are keeping busy by putting together aqua blocks. That's gonna be about 100 aqua blocks. You can also see that we've double stacked them. Kind of neat about these aqua blocks is if we don't have the footprint to go left or the footprint to go right, uh, we can go down with them and we can actually stack these things up to four high and uh, still structurally be able to put whatever we want to on top. In fact, this one, we're putting a patio right back over the top of them and there they are stacked on top of each other. So we're going to stack these too high just because we didn't have the real estate to go as wide as we wanted to with them. Sanding off the bottom, getting everything prepped up. We get our fabric in, we get our liner in, the liner, and then another layer of fabric over the top of that. We're gonna pull out some of those wrinkles in there and then we'll start getting the aqua blocks in. We pull back all the liner, backfill with sand. The main reason we like to backfill with the sand is to reduce the hydrostatic pressure. So if a lot of groundwater would come in and not get on top of the aqua blocks like we want it to in the event of a hundred year flood or something, instead of pushing or heaving our tank up out of the ground, it takes the water will take the pass of least resistance distance and push up through that sand vein eventually just percolating back into the ground so we always backfill with sand around these larger tanks helps really lock all those aqua blocks together and now we're going to start unfolding this whole thing and we're going to start kind of laying out our patio so i want to get a circle patio over the top of this that can accept a fire pit and so you can see that arched line there that's going to be the outside edge of our patio so when i'm placing my boulders to create my stream i'll keep those boulders just outside of that white line and come in here we're going to excavate out the rest of our stream take some of that soil kind of spread it around and then just continue to haul off whatever we don't need well, this is a special project for us because we're using a stone that we don't really get to use too often. It's called Pennsylvania Fieldstone, and it works perfect when doing streams 
that have very, very low grade changes. It's not a stone that stacks on top of each other very well and looks natural when you do, but when you're just going one or two high, it can look really fantastic. The reason I like this stone so much is because almost all of it is tapered towards one end. So it can be really high on one side and then tapered down really low to another side, making it really easy to do some cool things with waterfalls. You can see we come in here now, and as we place the stones, the only thing I'm thinking about is how do I want that water to twist and turn? And so we're just kind of trying to replicate the way we see things twist and turn in nature. If uh, there's a big scoured out edge, usually it's deeper on one side. If it twists one way, then the, other, the stream on the other side should be twisting a different way. Things are coming together. One of our challenges will be hiding that pump vault, but uh, we'll just put one of our fake stones over the top. You can see that we're putting um, some base material down, getting ready for that patio. So we set those rocks on the left side to match that arch over on the left. And we come in, kind of do a fabric pot, if you will, and that'll hold all that base material from washing into the aqua blocks. And now we're gonna put steel edging in to hold our patio material. We got a nice perfect circle and then a little organic on the stream side of everything. Putting in a bridge, if you guys have been watching the channel long enough, you know how much I love putting bridges in. If, uh, if you can figure out a design with a bridge, it just makes it that much more interactive and the bridge should lead to a destination spot. And in this case, it's that fire pit patio. Now here's something really different. Customer at the last minute said, hey, I've got one of these well pumps. Is there any way that you can incorporate this in? It's actually super easy. We're just gonna set it up so we can draw water right from our reservoir. Remember, we have that 3,000 gallon tank down there. So now the customer can actually come in, use the well pump, hand pump that thing into five gallon buckets, into little pails, and they can use it to water anything they want. Continuing to rock this thing in. Uh, the other thing we added over on the side there was one of our new 60 inch bowls. Uh, I think it's just an awesome element. It's a very hard thing for me to talk to a customer about because everybody wants to keep it looking natural, but I think these bowls, just the round organic shape, uh, just blends in really nice. I understand it's, it's kind of a formal element, but I think with the shape, it always works really well with our water features. It's also gonna give the customers one more little waterfall. Um, I love incorporating them whenever we can. And now these bowls can actually be set up as huge filters. All right, guys, are you ready to see this final project? This one was so much fun. Not only were the homeowners fantastic to work for, probably the most laid back homeowners ever. It was just a fun, creative project. They gave me free range to just kind of do what I wanted to do. They were totally sold on the idea of the bowl. They knew that they would get a waterfall. They knew there'd be a stream, but they had no idea how it was gonna come together. So let's show you exactly what they got to see the second they walked into their backyard this morning. So right now I'm standing on top of that 3,000 gallon tank. Remember all of those aqua blocks we put together? They're literally underneath me right now. So we put the fire pit patio right on top of those aqua blocks, which made it really convenient and an easy way to hide that. No way did we want to look at a 20 by 20 foot area of aqua block. So we just put the stream the way we wanted to do the stream, took some fabric of the backside of these rocks, and then just put the chips right over the top of everything making this space now usable. And this is one of the best spots in the whole area. You guys know how much I love bridges, right? And so of course we got a bridge in there that takes you to that best spot. This whole outdoor fire pit area. Just living that aquascape lifestyle, living by the water feature. Everybody gets something to look at. The other thing we did a little unique with us, it was a little bit of a surprise. They said, Brian, could you implement this into the water feature? And that's this well pump over here. There's a lot of small kids that come out into this area. They wanted something a little bit more interactive for the children. So we set up this well pump and it works perfect. This is just drawing water right out of the bottom of the reservoir. They can use this to come over, water different plants, come in, give this little guy a drink, give the Japanese maple a drink. And the best part about this well pump, if it spills and there's a little bit dripping or oops, 
I dropped my whole bucket of water, it all goes right back down into that 3,000 gallon tank. We're actually solving a problem out here. Being able to reuse that water reminds us that this whole project was put back here for a rainwater harvesting purpose. So now all of that water goes into this tank down here where we can at the very least keep our water feature totally self-sustaining, meaning we never have to add water to it, or they can borrow water from it to irrigate and use however they want. So you guys, the last video, I showed you some of these new products we have. This is the first project we got to use one and actually sell it, right? So we've got our big new 60 inch bowl. And remember, 60 inches is five feet. It's a massive, massive bowl. But when put into an application like this, where we get these big giant pieces of Pennsylvania field stone, it scales it down. It feels like it's just nestled back in there. The other reason the family really loves it is it's literally a bathtub for small children. Like they can get in and out of that thing. They can play in it, jump around. Later, they're gonna actually, like next spring, they'll come in and plant it all up, make it a project for some of the younger kids. But it's a fun little element gives us another waterfall and aesthetically just fits in here. I love when we can take these contemporary items and just intermix them into what would be a normal natural looking stream. And speaking of natural looking, this is my favorite angle right here. So when we were putting this together, Ed, the pond professor, actually came out here and we worked a lot on this little pool area down in here, setting that bowl and then building this waterfall here. If I were looking at a waterfall in nature, this is what I see. Not an even flow of water coming over a rock. It's fast in one area, it kind of trickles off of a face in another area. Water splashing on top of boulders here and there. It's all, it just, I love working with this rock. This Pennsylvania Fieldstone is such a cool, cool rock to work with. It's got so many different characters with the thickness and the thinness and the moss and the shapes. It's just fun and exciting to work with. And I think we did a killer job twisting and turning that water around and making it visible from not only the fire pit area, but from areas on the hammocks and then like always visible from inside the home. So this is that waterfall that's visible all the way from the house. We always wanna grab people's attention from inside the house and then pull them this way. So everybody that goes into their kitchen is gonna see this waterfall, get pulled out of the house, come past the hammock and then discover that there's a whole lot more than just this waterfall. I love this waterfall and it's a lot because of the size of this boulder. It's the moss that's covered over this. It's the way Jack integrated a log up there to get water to roll over a log before it did that big drop. There's just so many cool elements of this relatively simple little pool here. That water then twists hard, comes this way, and then does another drop before it goes into the stream. Like every project, there's so many parts that I love more than the next. This one's got so many great elements. I love this waterfall. I love that waterfall. I love the bridge. I love the stream. I love that we solved the problem. You guys, tell me your favorite part. What do you love most about this project? Can't wait to hear from you. Put it in the comments down below. Like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you in a couple weeks. Bye.